Maccabim Shani, two Maccabees, 13, in the 149th year. It was told Yahuda that Antichius Upator was coming with a great power into Yahuda, and with him Lysias his protector and ruler of his affairs, having either of them a Yavani power of footmen, a hundred and ten thousand, and horsemen five thousand and three hundred, and elephants two and twenty, and three hundred chariots armed with hooks. Mena rather, Menelaus also joined himself with them, and with great dissimulation encouraged Antiochus, not for the safeguard of the country, but because he thought to have been made governor. But the king of kings moved Antiochus' mind against this wicked wretch, and Lysias informed the king that this man was the cause of all mischief, so that the king commanded to bring him unto Baria, and to be put, rather, and to put him to death, as the manor is in that place. Now there was in that place a tower of fifty cubits high, full of ashes, and it had a round instrument which on every side hanged down into the ashes. And whosoever was condemned of sacrilege or committed any other grievous crime, there did all men thrust him unto death. Such a death it happened that wicked man to die, not having so much as burial in the earth, and that most justly, for inasmuch as he had committed many sins about the altar, whose fire and ashes were holy, he received his death in ashes. Now the king came with a barbarous and haughty mind to do far worse to the Yahudim, than had been done in his father's time. Which things, when Yahudah perceived, he commanded the multitude to call upon Yahuwah night and day, that if ever at any other time he would now also help them, being at the point to be put from their Torah, from their country, and from the holy temple, and that he would not suffer the people that had even now been but, but a little refreshed, to be in subjection to the blasphemous nations. So, when they had all done this together and besought the merciful Yahweh with weeping and fasting and lying flat upon the ground three days long, Yahuda, having exhorted them, commanded they should be in a readiness. And Yahuda, being apart with the elders, determined before the king's host should enter into Yahuda and get the city to go forth and try the matter and fight by the help of Yahuwah. So, when he had committed all to the creator of the world and exhorted his soldiers to fight manfully, even unto death for the Torah, the temple, the city, the country, and the commonwealth, he camped by Modin. And having given, rather, and having given the watchword to them that were about him. Victory is of Elohim with the most valiant and choice men. He went in into the king's tent by night and slew in the camp about four thousand men. And the chiefest of the elephants with all that were upon him. And at last they filled the camp with fear and tumult and departed with good success. This was done in the break of the day because the protection of Yahudah did help him. Now, when the king had taken a taste of the manliness of the Yahudim, he went about to take the holds by policy, and marched toward Beit Surah, which was a stronghold of the Yahudim. But he was put to flight, failed, and loss of his men. For Yahudah had conveyed unto them that were in it such things as were necessary, but Rorokos, who was in the Yahudim's host, disclosed the secrets to the enemies. Therefore, he was sought out, and when they had gotten him, they put him in prison. The king treated with them in Beit Sum the second time, 
gave his hand, took theirs, departed, fought with Yahada, was overcome, heard that Philippe, who was left over the affairs in Antioch, was desperately bent, confounded, entreated the Yahudim, submitted himself, and swore to all equal conditions, agreed with them, and, if, and offered sacrifice, honored the temple, and dealt kindly with the palace, and accepted well of Yahuda Maccabee, made him principal governor from Akko unto Gerar, came to Akor, rather Akko. The people there were grieved for the covenants, for they stormed, because they would make them their covenants void. Rather, because they would make their covenants void, Lysias went up to the judgment seat, said as much as he could be in defense of the cause, persuaded, pacified, made them well affected, returned to Antioch. Thus it went, touching the king's coming and departing. <laughs>